creating a nostalgic film look using a LUT and film grain is today's topic on Luminar Coffee Break. Let's see what we can accomplish in 10 minutes or less, starting now. Hello, everyone. Glad you could join us. Bonjour. Glad to see you here. Hello, Harry. All right. So our topic here is going to take um, just a regular modern day photo like this and kind of convert it into more of like a nostalgic film look, including adding some grain. I'm going to zoom in a little bit tight and let it render. You'll see the grain that we're adding. Now, I know most people are thinking is we do everything we can not to add grain to our images. We, we try to get rid of them or digital noise. Grain is different from digital noise. So notice like the background, it's kind of boring. So by adding that just a tight, that slight touch of film grain is going to give that background a little bit more uh, of a texture. All right. So I'm going to start right from the beginning. And we'll do adjustments and revert to original. So here's my original image that we're going to be starting with. Now, there's a couple ways we can start with. You know, one way from templates is to grab one of the templates here. It doesn't matter which one um, you start with. Well, it does matter if you want that vintage look. You might want to look at templates like the cinematic looks. Um, you know, and if you don't have those, that's okay. I'm going to show you how to, how to create one from scratch. But that's where I would normally start just to save time. All right. So for those that don't have it, let's start from the beginning. Now, typically, I like to come in and work with the Accent AI. But in a film studio environment, a shooting environment like this, the Accent AI tries to fix things that I purposely chose to be dark or chose to be out of focus. So I'm going to leave that alone right now. I, want, I don't want to mess with that. As for light, yes, I want to make sure my profile is set. And I'm going to come down here, just bump up the black tones a little bit, and then the white tones. Good. And that's just a simple look at that. that, that that's just a little bit um, of an edit, and it's making it look better. So now I have that set. Your first choice would be to jump down here to black and white, which we will, but we're going to do that at the very end and just convert it to black and white. And already it's starting to look like a vintage look. And you could dial in for the, for the saturation. We could bring back some of the reds and the yellows and the skin just a bit. And it's going to give us that muted color. I'm going to shut this off for a moment and we'll come back to that towards the end. All right. Uh, details, I just want to make it just a little sharper. So notice before I even get to the cinematic look, I want to prepare the image for it. So now my eyes are fixed on the image. Um, I'll save that film grain to the end because I don't, I don't want that to skew my, perspe my perspective on this shot. All right, now we come down to the mood tool. Now from here, there are several built-in moods that we could use that'll help us get this look. And the best way to do it is just to spend time going through each one of them. And after a while, you'll, you'll start to pick up on a few of them. Like, I love Chicago. Chicago looks really good. So does Dallas. All right? So I'm just checking the looks. I'm going to go with Dallas. I can adjust the amount. Good. And then I could desaturate to give it more of that muted look effect, or I could bring it out more. I'm going to give it just a little bit less and then build up the contrast just a touch. All right, so there we are so far. Before, after, not a whole lot so far. All right, now next is what are a few things that are bothering me? Yes, these right here, these little um, specks on the wall, <laughs> the, the dirt spots on the wall. We could use the erase tool or I'm going to use the portrait bokeh AI tool to get rid of those. So I have that in the back of my mind. We have that set. 
The dramatic tool is really cool. Look at that. Look what the dramatic tool, that right there is doing most of the heavy lifting. But I want to come down to the, the advanced part and dial back some of the brightness. And that's going to help me with desaturating it also. So look at what this tool did before and after. So that one tool alone, and I'll zoom in a little bit more, that one tool right here does a lot of the heavy lifting along with the mood tool. All right? So while we're here, let's check out the matte tool. And matte's going to give us that old-fashioned um, faded look that we're looking for. Good. Look at that. And you see how it's also and a little more characteristics or more, or more little or more better quality to the background. All right, here we go before after and we're slowly getting to what we're looking for. So the LUT right here for the mood did quite a bit to help us. Let me shut it off. So look at what the LUT is doing, ready? Give it a second. You see how it's just shifting the colors ever so slightly. It's that dramatic tool that really, really helped us along the path. And then we combined it with the matte tool. And that matte tool, again, is giving us that old faded look. All right? So we have all that set. Now we're going to come in, and I'm going to go back to the matte for a moment and dial it back just a little bit. There we go. Actually, it's the fadedness I wanted to dial. All right, good. Now, from here, let's attack the grain. And for this, I want to make sure I'm at 100%, just so I can see what it's, the effect it's doing. Now, yes, I'm very, very concerned about the face, but let's see what it's going to do to the background. And to do this, I'm going to go right to an extreme so we can see exactly what film grain does. And if the roughness isn't selected, just drop down, click on the drop down menu. Now, the size of it is going to be important. Here it is at 100%. And look how huge the film grain looks. And then the roughness. All right. And this sort of looks like being very, very rough. I want to dial that back a bit. And as for the size, let's keep it more fine, like a fine grain. Give it a couple seconds. That looks good. Now we can adjust the amount. And I'm going to dial it right about here. And look at that. It's ever so slightly. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more. Well, it's a little too much. Right about there. Give it a second to render. There we go. Look how that's adding that, that, that nostalgic look to this image. And I like how that is. Now, let's come right up here to Vignette. Choose the subject. And I want to just darken the background, the edges, just a bit. There we go. And... Let's fit the screen there. There we have it. All right. So now that I have that set, these little specks in the back, notice how they're blending in, but they, they're still kind of bothering me just a little bit. So let's come down here to Portrait Bokeh AI. Now, this is a tool I normally wouldn't use in a situation like this, but watch what it's going to do for us. Let's give it a second to render. And once it selects the subject, it's going to allow the background to go soft. And it's going to take that film grain and make the film grain appear softer too. Let's give it a second. And there it is. So see how it selected the subject nicely? And look at over here. Before, look at that. After, so those specks that were bothering me earlier, instead of going in with a fine tooth comb, 
and a brush and just dropping each and erasing each one of those dots, I just used a simple slider to get rid of that. So here we have it, before and after. Now, what I wanted to point out is to get this type of a look, we did use a LUTs, then we also used the film grain and the dramatic tool. So what I'm trying to show you here is when you have time, and if you want to do quick edits, then it's easy. Just grab one of the templates, click on one of these here. Let's say, um, okay, well, let's say this one here. If you like it, continue on. If you want to make further changes, start enhancing it. That's how I started, and then that's how I ended up creating uh, one of my, my templates, which will go here. Notice they're all not going to look identical. So here it is. This is the one I came up with, and we'll give it a second for the rendering of the grain. There it is. So that's the one I just sat with for about 15 to 20 minutes. I played with that one and this one here to give me the looks. Now, um, I did mention a little bit earlier, once we do this, notice how we still have it in color. I'm going to go back to this one here. When, once you get working on the experimenting of the, um, of the images, then you can go back and say, okay, well, for black and white, here it is. I want to add the black and white effect. So I have, I convert it to black and white, but I still want some of that color. So option one could be a black and white vintage look like this. Option two could be go, to go into the saturation and adjust the red and the yellow just a touch. And now we're bringing back some of that color, keeping everything else looking a little more vintage. So the whole concept of this here, and, and I wanted to make sure we, we, we pointed out, is experiment. If, if this is something you're, you're on a tight deadline, then stick to one of the templates, get it out the door as soon as you can. But if you want to experiment and create your own vintage looks, experiment with film grain, the LUTs of course, and then dramatic. So start with those three, play with them, tweak them, get them the way you want them, and then maybe add in that black and white tool. And once you start to create different sets of that vintage look, keep saving them like I did, one after another. You may call this vintage look one, vintage look uh, with grain, vintage look with LUTs, and you just build on it all the way through. All right? Hey, guys, thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you at the next coffee break.